It's kind of hard to see through this gas cloud, but I think I might be looking at the best Star Trek episode in 20 years. This is a review of Memento Mori, the fourth episode of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. If you haven't seen the episode yet, take heed. Spoilers lie ahead. Last week was the Outbreak episode. This week is the Submarine episode. Heavy balance of terror vibes with some Wrath of Khan thrown in for good measure. Most of the episode is spent with the Enterprise heavily damaged after an attack by the Gorn sneaking around through the atmosphere of a brown dwarf star trying to avoid another confrontation while the crew scrambles to figure out how they're gonna, you know, survive. We get a central conflict that is built on constantly escalating tension. We get subplots featuring characters who, due to the damage inflicted to the Enterprise, are stuck in various sections of the ship. Hammer and Uhura are trapped in a cargo bay. Dr. Mbenga and Nurse Chapel are in sick bay, doing their best to tend to the wounded without the benefit of most of their advanced equipment, which is unavailable due to power outages and whatnot. Number one is also in sick bay and is seriously wounded, and treating her is complicated because of said power outages and unavailable equipment. Pike and the rest of the main crew are on the bridge trying to problem solve. There's a lot going on, and almost all of it works splendidly. So what makes this such a great episode? Well, for one thing, the way this script repeatedly and effectively uses reversals to heighten the drama over and over and over again in this episode. The heroes think they've done something to improve their situation, only to see things instantly turn around and get much worse. They dock with a damaged cargo ship to rescue survivors, only to realize it's a trap laid by the Gorn, designed to leave them vulnerable to an attack. They flee to the gas cloud of the brown dwarf, but doing so blinds their sensors. Spock figures out a way to use the movements of the gas cloud to track the Gorn ship that is pursuing them, and Pike orders a bold maneuver to fly the Enterprise above the enemy ship and drop their one remaining photon torpedo. The maneuver works, the Gorn ship is destroyed, but that is revealed to be yet another trap as more Gorn ships appear using the explosion to locate the Enterprise. Uhura assists an injured Hemmer in making a necessary repair while they're trapped in the cargo bay and endures a series of apparent victories followed immediately by setbacks. It's reversal after reversal after reversal. And the cumulative effect is to make this feel like an inescapable situation. Now, obviously, we know that they are going to escape, not only because we know Pike and Spock and her at the very least, uh, survive due to their presence in Star Trek shows that take place later in the timeline, but also because we've seen TV shows before. And we know they aren't going to destroy the ship and kill all the protagonists in the fourth episode of a 10-episode season. But even with that knowledge, the episode grips, because then the question becomes, how are they going to get out of this? Once you've established this is an inescapable situation and you've made the Gorn into a convincingly unbeatable enemy, how are our heroes going to survive? When a story compels you to ask that question and care about the answer, that's a good story. For another thing, the Gorn are established as that unbeatable enemy. They are formidable and kind of scary, and you never see a single Gorn on screen. Think for a moment how impressive that is. The episode takes an alien species, most famously depicted as a guy in a hilarious rubber lizard suit, and makes them completely credible as cunning, strategically brilliant, relentless, unstoppable killers. What they look like is left to our imagination, but from their behavior, it's as if 
the raptors from Jurassic Park learn how to fly spaceships. The Gorn in this episode are the most formidable adversaries faced by a Star Trek crew since the first appearance of the Borg in Star Trek The Next Generation. And like in that episode, our heroes don't win by defeating the adversaries, but merely by surviving. Security Chief La'an Nunian Singh's personal history with the Gorn obviously plays a big role in the episode. La'an does a lot of the heavy lifting in establishing the seriousness of the threat posed by the Gorn. She's the one who first recognizes that it is the Gorn they are facing, and her first recommendation to Pike is to get the hell out of there as soon as possible. Don't fight because you can't win. Run. Except the Enterprise is damaged and running isn't an option. La'an's memories accessed with help from a mind meld with Spock help the heroes to improve their situation. She remembers how to decipher a Gorn code and uses it to trick one Gorn ship into destroying another, but don't fix everything. I like that. La'an is very much at the center of this story, and I imagine it would have been tempting to have her mind meld with Spock lead to the ultimate solution. But given how serious the threat of the Gorn is depicted as being, that would probably have come across as too easy. So La'an is able to improve their odds, but not completely save the day. I like the conceit that the episode takes place on Starfleet Remembrance Day, when crew members wear the insignia of ships on which they served with fallen comrades. Not only does it become relevant when several Enterprise crew members, nobody important to us, are killed during the fight with the Gorn, but it also provides a nice setup for La'an. At the beginning of the episode, she refuses to wear the insignia of her old colony ship, but then at the end, having remembered her brother's sacrifice to save her and survived the Gorn not once, but twice, she does wear it. A little obvious, sure, but it also gives the episode a feeling of cohesion, continuity, and closure that works really well. I like that there's a lot of technical and scientific stuff happening in this episode, but a minimal amount of techno babble. Even when Uhura is working with Hammer to reset the environmental system in the cargo bay, there's very little techno babble. And the task ultimately comes down to having to check to see if a thing is hot. And if it's cool, that means it needs to be replaced. So you pull the thing out of the other thing. It's simple. It gives the character a clear goal that we can understand. And it's visual. So it's not just watching someone push buttons, although we do also get a lot of that. And the Enterprise's ultimate escape from the Gorn involves exploiting the phenomenon of gravitational redshifting, which is a real thing. I'm not sure it actually works the way it works in this episode, but I don't really care. This is Star Trek, not an episode of Nova. I like when Star Trek uses actual science in a way that sounds credible, even if it's actually not. I think it's neat. Finally, amidst all the tension and action and creative problem solving, there are some absolutely wonderful character beats. Number one gets to be a hero when she orders that the last of sickbay's blood supply be used to save another crew member rather than her. That pays off at the end when we see that Dr. Mbenga has saved number one by giving her a transfusion of his own blood, which is also a nice continuation of the closeness those two characters established in the previous previous episode. Spock has some nice moments. He experiences a memory of his sister, Michael, while in the mind meld with Lon, and we catch a glimpse of how he still grieves her loss. Also, Spock reassures Pike that he did the right thing after Pike takes an action that saves the ship, but costs the life of a single crew member, telling Pike that he's questioning his decision for the same reason he made it because he values life. And speaking of Pike and how he values the lives of his crew, Anson Mount gives us another extraordinary moment as Pike when, having escaped the Gorn, Pike calls down to the cargo bay to see if Uhura and Hemmer have survived. No answer comes, and Pike seems to grimly accept the loss of two more members of his crew, but then Uhura finally answers 
and Pike's relief is visceral. He exhales, he doubles over, and God damn it, I felt it. There's another more subtle Pike moment in this episode that I love too. When things with the Gorn appear to be at an impasse, Pike orders the Enterprise, which has ventured deeper into the Brown Dwarf, to stop and calls for the crew to prepare to be boarded. It's not a path to victory or escape. It's a path to going down, but not without a fight. But then, as it dives deeper into the star to approach the Enterprise, the Gorn ship is destroyed, unable to withstand the atmospheric pressure. We can see how surprised Pike is by this unexpected turn of events, but he doesn't let the crew see that. He takes a moment then turns around and spins the attack as a risk he was hoping would pay off. La'an, you said the Gorn would stop at nothing to catch their prey. Well, that's what I was counting on. It wasn't, but it worked out that way, and Pike is a smart enough captain to play it off and hopefully use it to inspire the crew, something he reminds La'an of the importance of earlier in the episode. So, yeah... This is a great episode. The first truly great episode of any of the new Trek shows, which is not to say there haven't been excellent episodes before this one. There have been, particularly of Discovery, but Memento Mori is the first episode of the current crop of Star Trek shows that rises to the level of a potential classic. It's just so goddamn good. I said it's the best Star Trek episode in 20 years. I don't know what the most recent better episode would be. I didn't do an audit. It's just a feeling I have. The first episode that comes to mind is Regeneration, the outstanding Borg episode from Star Trek Enterprise's second season. I looked it up, and that one aired in 2003, which would be 19 years ago. I haven't watched that one in a little bit, but my sense is that this episode of Strange New Worlds is better. And that's a high compliment, because for my money, Regeneration is one of the very best episodes Enterprise ever did. So if Memento Mori is better than that, what's the most recent episode it's not better than? I don't know. But the fact that I'm having to reach back so far to find one kind of makes the point, doesn't it? This is a great episode. To the cast and crew, to Dan Liu, who directed this one, and Davey Perez and Bo DeMaio, who wrote it. Well done. Fantastic work. Now do it again. Please. More. Please. Thank you. (laughs) Those are my thoughts. Please share your thoughts with me in the comments. If you want to support my channel, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash Steve Shives or become a channel member by clicking the join button or make a one-time gift via PayPal or Venmo or the super thanks button uh, below the video. Links to all of those are in the description. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next week for a review of Episode 5.